All right, guys, this is going to be, uh, I'm going to start doing like a series of, of diagrams and questions once a week. I'm going to post on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe, you'll get notifications every time I post one of these up. But um, I started going over some of the diagrams, and what I'll be doing is I'll picking out specific problems with different machines and their diagram. And then it'll be up to you to try to say, oh, this is what I would do. This is what I would test. Okay, this was a diagram that uh, one of my former students years ago called me about just the other day. The problem that's there is not the problem he had, but I thought it'd be a good diagram to use for explanation. So uh, let's just go over this as far as the complaint and, and some of the information, and then we'll go to the actual diagram. So I want to talk about a couple of things. It says Whirlpool dryer. So this is a Whirlpool dryer, but it's not similar to the actual Whirlpool diagram for most people who work with Whirlpool. This is one of those machines that was built by Samsung That's for right. Whirlpool. So this diagram is one of the uh, Samsung diagrams. Um, it says customer calls and states that nothing is working. Uh, you test L1 to neutral, and that would be you're testing. Oops, one second. Touch screen is off a little bit. And I don't know why it's doing that. So let me just um, use the mouse here. So they're saying from L1, it didn't even select my drawing tool. Look at that. Okay, so. From L1, I guess it won't work without my mouse. Okay, so from L1 to neutral, here and here, we have 120 volts AC. Is that normal? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's a good reading. L1 to L2 is 240 volts AC. So that's L1 to L2 is 240. And then this one over here, L1 to neutral. L2 to neutral, so we got 120 between these two, 120 between these two, and 240 in the outside. First of all, where is this in the machine? Power cord. That's where the power cord actually connects to the back of the machine with the, with the screws. Like if you're installing a cord and you have the black, red, and white uh, cables and you attach your power cord to the back of that. That's where this is. So we have proper power to the machine. And one thing always to check before you start tearing the machine apart is make sure you have the proper voltage. I've seen people that machine, they press start, nothing happens, and they start tearing the machine apart, start testing anything. And when you do a diagram uh, circuit here and troubleshoot, you're supposed to look at the diagram and try to figure out, okay, what is not working? A lot of people, when they first posted this question, a lot of people say, well, I'll check the thermal fuse. <laughs> well, there is real no thermal fuse. This one here is like a safety thermostat, and this one's a safety thermostat. On most whirlpools, the thermal fuse is here, and this is our main motor. So if this fuse was bad, the motor wouldn't run. And they're saying, no, I'll check the thermal fuse, or i check the door switch. But what is the question actually saying, or, or what is the customer actually saying the machine's doing? Nothing. So what, what does that mean to you? If a customer calls you up on the phone and says, listen, I'm not going to be home, you know, uh, my machine's not doing anything. What, what do you think that that means? Something wrong with the main power? It's not the line, right? What? It's not the line. It has a bad control, a bad computer. Yeah. It's not doing nothing. It's like it's not drying clothes. Uh, main control. Okay, so you're saying control. Mm -hmm. Because if we look, this is a control board. Mm -hmm. If I say nothing's working, I'm not saying the dryer doesn't run. Mm -hmm. I'm saying nothing's working. So the control board doesn't even light up. So you have to read into the question or the statement. And if you're working for a bigger company or, or for a company that does work for warranties or does work for extended contract companies, your company is not the one who talks to the customer and takes the service call. They take the service call and then they schedule it with the customer and they pass that on to your company or to you 
and you get whatever they communicated to the customer. And just like some of these diagrams you're reading, you're like, what the heck are they talking about? Because some of these machines are made in other countries and someone had to translate it. And now you've got to understand what that translation is. So I recommend when you get a complaint like this, call the customer, confirm with the customer, say, ma'am or sir, uh, I get this complaint. What is your machine actually doing? You know, make sure you understand what the complaint is because you might have something in your shop for this machine that you don't bring because you think it's a door switch or a thermal oh, I got those two parts on my truck. Mm -hmm. But maybe you have a control board in your shop, maybe not, but maybe you have a control board in your shop and maybe that'd be a good idea to take something like that with you as well. So always confirm it out before you go out, all right. So let's move on to this screen here. So we, we determined that there's power in there and the complaint says nothing works. So what that complaint meant is that the control board doesn't even light up. You press the button, you don't hear any sounds. You don't see any lights on the board. So we're not looking for the motors not running and starting. We're looking at why doesn't the board respond, you know? So again, knowing what you're looking for is more important than just finding the answer, okay? So if I have power here and the board doesn't work, then what, what kind of test would we make? That was the question. What kind of test would we make on this diagram if nothing worked, but we had to uh, go there and check it out? We found out that there's power here, line one to neutral, 120, line two to neutral, 120, and line one to line two is 240. So we have proper power. What's the next step? Test the make sure power. They... Wait, 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 one person at a time. What did you say? Test if the board's getting power. Test the board's getting power? Okay, so here's my board. Where on that board will I make the test? And, and raise your hand, that way you guys aren't talking over each other. Yes, Vince? The trans, trans phone. Okay, but be specific. If you're talking to me on the phone, you're looking at the diagram, mm -hmm. I don't have the diagram, mm -hmm. okay? So you're telling me, Richard, I need you to check power coming into the board, because mm -hmm. if the board's not lining up, board could be bad, right? Mm -hmm. But I need to know first if I'm getting power. So where would I put my meter? Anybody have a, where would you tell me I need you to put one meter lead here, one meter lead here, set your meter to 120 volts AC, and see if that board is getting power. So, would it be one, one and two? Okay, but I see two twos, I see three ones, I see a four, five, another two, and a six there. So, if you're telling me two and one, what, be more the specific. The white, the relay, one. The the okay, wait, wait, wait. One person you got a at a time. Relay motor too. One person at a time. Raise your hand. Go ahead, Ken. Relay one motor. Relay one? Okay, well, there's two wires there. Where, where, where do I test? Um, The brown and the black. No. That is checking the switch on the relay that sends power to my motor. Yes. One and two on the relay motor. One on the... um. On your connection right here, the white wire right here, going into your trans uh, transformer. This one here, yes. and two on your uh, relay motor, the black wire. Okay, so let's do black coming in. Black is here. It runs down here. Oops, I was on the wrong one there. It runs down here. It runs all the way over and comes in to feed this relay. Now, what you told me to test with black and brown was that. If I come in the black here, it's going to jump over to brown and come down to my motor. That's what that relay switch does. It sends power to my motor. But if you see, it's also connected to another wire here, which goes into the transformer. And boards in appliances don't actually use 120 volts. Yes, 120 comes in. But usually computer boards use low voltage. They use 12 volts, 5 volts, 7 volts. Right. The little LEDs are one voltage. The magnetic coils on those relays are another voltage. Right. Okay? And how we do this, we send power to a transformer in that board, which causes that board to light up. Mm -hmm. So that's line one coming in. And then I'll use a different color here. Let me use red. And the neutral... 
is coming in here to the other side of this transformer. So we see this. What are these coily things inside of this transformer? What is that called? The little squiggly um, lines. Primary, I think the. No, but primary what? What the are they? Uh, the what? The windings. The windings. Right. We have one primary winding and two secondary windings. So we're right. checking power coming into the board. And it's easy to see that. So you put one meter lead here and one meter lead here. And if I have 120 volts, what do I do? The negative transformer is getting power. Transformer is getting power. Two hammers are getting power, but what do I do as a technician after I check that? See if it's outputting the 12 volts or whatever to the board. It's soldered onto the board. It's not a replaceable and part. Change the, board. The board. change the board. Change the board. The only other thing I might do before I start changing parts right. is I would check these two connectors mm -hmm. to this board. And that's your user interface, like when you press the buttons like normal dry or start yeah. or whatever. I'm going to check the connection between this board and that board right. to see if any of them are bad or dirty or corroded or whatever. But if the board don't light up and I've got power to the transformer, that's good. Okay, simple test, you're done. Mm. But you have to read the diagram and know where these points are. So I did a little something to this diagram. What did I do? Mm. What's the difference between this one and this one? <laughs> I'm I'm just just it. Like it. You just trace it, that's it. You just no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, the transformer. You highlight which one was L1? Was one that one? Or no, look at this one. Yeah, look at the main control yeah, board. What happened? The transformer has a trans one down. Okay. Good so, line. I removed the transformer from the circuit. Yes, sir. The line one is in behind the dryer. The line one what? Is behind the dryer in the back, not the, these, the actual board. These three are behind yes. the machine. Yes. This is the board. Right. And it feeds the board here. Okay. It feeds the board here. Right. And it feeds the, feeds, well, it doesn't feed the board, it feeds the light. Right. Okay. But a lot of times when you look at a diagram, mm -hmm. you don't see the transform. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So you need to figure out, okay, my neutral's coming into the board here, and my line one's coming into the board there. Somewhere on this board's got to be a transformer, and it has to be connected from neutral, yeah. and it has to be to power. Now, with, this is neutral, so we wouldn't use that one. Nope. That's a power wire, and that's a power wire. Right. This relay terminal here could have been connected to my transformer too, right? In this yeah. diagram, we wouldn't know yeah. if we didn't see the other one. So what I would do is put my meter lead here and check for 120, check for 120, right. 120 on both of them. I got power to the board. There's no other way that board's going to receive power. Okay? So it was an easy one with a transfer. I'm going to start getting more and more complicated with the diagrams and the questions I answer. But I, what I want you to see is how do I want you to look at the diagram? Mm -hmm. How do I want you to answer this is what I would do? And then see, okay, this is how we fix it. That's a simple thing. Board don't work. We got power to the board. The board's bad. Yeah. So I went ahead and said, okay, well, here's a dryer diagram. <laughs> okay. So what do you want me to zoom in on? Our power, our plug is here. Mm -hmm. We got line one. Yeah. We got neutral. And we got line two over there. Right. Same problem. We got power. Same problem. Board don't light up. So you want me to expand it and show you the control board a little better? Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take this and we're going to make it bigger. So you guys can find that transformer on the board. Now here's the board. Right. All right. So where's my transformer? Do you guys see a transformer on that board? No. My no. must be in the beginning somewhere. It's going to be in the beginning somewhere. It has huh? to go through the transformer to power the board. How is this going to do it? Well, it's got to go through a transformer. Yeah. There's no transformer in the drawing, but there's a transformer on that board. There's a transformer on that board, but you don't see it. So the first diagram was easy. Yeah. <laughs> this is another Whirlpool dryer. I just, yeah. I went to Home Depot, 
found a Whirlpool drawer that had a computer. Yeah. Went to Service Matters, downloaded this diagram, put it up there. Mm. There's no transformer. Now what do I do? <laughs> it's ah, uh, call Richard, right? Can you look at this for a second? Time <laughs> for the test? That's tech support. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the other diagram for a second now. If we if we looked at this diagram now, one thing we have to notice on a board for, for an, any appliance right. is that the board needs to get power all the time. It can't go through door switches. It can't go mm. through other things. Right. We want the board to have power all the time. Even like a dishwasher, when you look at the diagram, yeah. you see two door switches that power goes through and then goes to the board, yeah. but you see two other wires that go right to the board without the door switch. Because we don't want like open the door and it's like halfway through a cycle for the power to stop to, to right. the control board, it lose all its memory and you have to start the cycle over again. Same with the microwave. If you open up the door in the microwave, the microwave is supposed to stop running, but the, the board stays lit up. Yeah. So what we have to look for is we have to look for where is power going to the board all the time. So take a minute now and look at that schematic and find out where line one and neutral go to that board without going through any switches, safeties, or whatever because those two wires are probably the wires that are feeding your transformer. Right. So take a minute, look at this diagram here, and where on this board would power go all the time that would possibly go to the transformer? It looks like it's right in the beginning of the top. Yeah. Right at the beginning and of the top. Um, neutral, oh, no, no, no. Are you saying to the board? There's, there's stuff between it, never mind. You can make it a little more bigger, see? It's kind of... I can make it a little... We're blinding this glass. We got glasses, but we still can't see. I'm sorry. Yeah, still can't, can't see. see. Right. <laughs> Listen, just at the, at the top. So I make it too much bigger, you won't be able to see the whole oh, that's board. Fine. Okay, that's, that's fine. fine right that's there. Good. Yeah, go let, me, let me show you the whole board. The bottom is the heater and stuff, so oh, okay. we'll, we'll just take a look at, at this board here. here. So where would power go into the board to feed the board itself? Well, be specific. Over to the right. You You're telling me on the phone. Over to the right. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm standing over here now. What? <laughs> well, there's one wire we what? J J A three. J A three is neutral. I can't see that. J A J A three. J A three. That is that is that is one of them. That is neutral. I'll go ahead and. Let me just change the color back to yellow. And I'll go ahead and complete. This is neutral. J92. Hold on, hold on, hold oh, on. Let's, 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 uh, okay. let's give everybody an opportunity here. So we're coming in here. Where this is our neutral. Yeah, so that's where I'm going to put one meter. Lead. Take a minute, guys. That's neutral. So what do, what do I need? Line one or line two. One of them got to go to feed that board. Like this is J92. That's only right there, where it say A, where the dot is, that line right there. Coming in, coming in on J92. Okay, well that's line one coming down. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it spits uh, off in the Some yeah, people are saying J92. That's yeah. this terminal right here. Yeah. Is that J92? Is that power coming in? Yeah. yeah. And it has no interruptions. It has, it has no interruptions. So that was the key that I was trying to, to, to focus on with this diagram. Is that power comes here. So you aren't looking, but there's a coil. And then you got your secondary coils here. I can't draw too well at the palace, and for some reason my finger's not working. This is the secondary primary, right? That's the primary on primary. top, and then I just drew two oh, secondaries. Right. So Gee, that's how the transform come into the board. Would there be anywhere else on the board that line one or neutral could mm. possibly come in and feed that? Mm. Um. I mean, we got a neutral here. But look, it goes through the door switch. Right. That's no good. Okay, we got line one here, but that's the light bulb. Uh, this is a water valve. It's probably that's probably because it's a dryer. It's probably a steam valve. Right. Okay, and then we go down yeah, here. Yeah. This only goes through a relay switch. It doesn't actually feed the board. So, are there any other line ones or neutrals that are there? No. 
J A one. Well, J A one goes yes. through yeah, through I a water valve. I see it. I see it. Um, so there there are no other lines right, where line right. one goes in right. and neutral goes right. without yeah. any interruptions. Right. Do you guys see what I'm pointing out? Mm -hmm. Okay, so tomorrow I'm gonna have a little exercise for you to do where I'm gonna give you a few diagrams that don't show you no transformer on the board. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to tell me these two are where power come into the board. These two are where power come into the board. These are power into this board. How does power come in and identifying it? Because a lot of times when you look at a board, you're just looking at a box drawn on a piece of paper. You're like, well, how the hell do I know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> you need to see all of the terminals yeah. and you need to learn what they do. Here's one other thing that I want you guys to start paying attention to. Some terminals are low voltage, some terminals are high voltage. Now when I say high voltage, I'm talking about 120, 240. Right. Okay, so let me just pick out a, 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 a terminal. J91. J91. Is that high voltage or low voltage? Now low voltage is like five volts, seven volts, 12 volts. Yeah. It's low voltage, because it's coming from the board. Well, J91 yeah, goes to what? The motor. The motor. Yeah. Can't so be low that's, voltage. That's, voltage. that's power for the, the motor. The board does low voltage only. No, no, no. The because control board. Got it. Because what does that say right there? What does that say? Motor, motor, motor relay. relay. Again, here's something that's stated, right. but not given to you directly. There's a relay. So a relay would be a coil, which would be soldered onto the board. And then there would be a switch here that's open. And then when the board wants the motor to run, you press start. And the board says, hey, customer wants the dryer to run. It's going to send power, low voltage from this transformer to this relay coil. Mm. It's going to close that switch. And one of these terminals are going to go here. Mm. Where do you think the other side of that relay is going to connect to the board? J1. J81, where is J81? Relay uh, K4. That is the... But that, it's got a water valve in it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just said that before. J84? Yeah, I wouldn't both say but that. A J84 here? Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you a question. If I came here to feed the motor with power, and I come out the motor, this is neutral, right? Through the door switch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then wouldn't this then, JA4, be neutral also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can't connect this one and this one together, then all I would have is neutral on both sides of my motor, right? So what do I need? L1 or L2? You need, yeah, you need power. I need oh, L1. Oh. I don't need L2 yeah. because L1 and L2 are strictly for the heating element, which is down below. On a dryer to heat element, your only thing uses 240. L1. Everything else is 120 volts. So where would this other side of my relay go? Anybody got an answer? I would say J9 and the high voltage, right? J9 what? J92. J92. That's correct. So power is coming in here, and then the switch is right here. And then the low voltage, if I just change colors now, this low voltage would go like this, here and here, but there'd be some processor on the board which would connect this to the transformer. And then when this gets power, it's gonna close that switch and send 120 volts to the motor so the motor can run. You see that? It's not drawn on the board. It's not drawn in the diagram. Yeah. You have to read, okay, this is a relay. What parts of a relay? It's like, well, how the hell am I supposed to know that? You're supposed to know. Right. You're supposed to practice enough with these diagrams so you can just look at it and figure out, okay, if that's a relay and no relay has a switch and a coil, how does that switch get power in and where does it go out? All relays are like 120 and up, right? Well, all the switches of the relay are 120, but the coils are low voltage if they're attached to a board. Relays in general doesn't go low voltage. 
Yeah. Well, they could be low voltage too. Okay. You have to look for what is powering the motor. Still, right? Yeah, you you have you have to look at the machine and say, okay, this is a motor, and if this is going to neutral, if this this side here of my motor is going here to my neutral and it goes through the door switch and out. If the door switch is bad, would my motor run? No. No. It it what's this? This is a belt switch. So if the belt broke, would my motor run? Nope. Okay, here I got a thermal fuse. If it's bad, my motor will run? Nope. Okay. So I got a question. And we'll we'll just continue this with this diagram here. Press start. Dryer motor doesn't run. Hmm. Your board lights up this time. It's not the same problem. Your dryer lights up, the controls light up, you press start, mm. nothing happens. Mm. You hear a click on the board, what does that mean? Relay. Relay. Relay's trying to close, right? Yep. Okay, so what do you do now? I'll test on J91 all the way to neutral. Okay, J91 all the way to neutral, right? Really all the way to neutral, right? Maybe before the motor to see if everything between there is working. And then it's 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 Absolutely. Well, where would you put your two meter leads? Let's be specific. I'm going to raise this a little bit. I'm going to raise this off the board just to. Where would I put my meter? Mm, you could do J91 to. Well, you could do that or you can jump straight ahead. I mean, if. if J91 to what, though? You got two meter leads. Where, where do I put both could, my meter leads? You could either do J91 to TF2 or you can jump to the. I can't even see the other one on the board. Bro. I can't tell you where it is. Get closer. So here's J91. I'll put a meter lead right there. Yes. yes. Now what? You could do it to. That's not just one. TF. I mean. From TF2. Yeah, TF2 because you have no test lead. Yeah. To do so that TF2. Right on the right side of the thermal. So you're gonna have one meter lead on the board, and that one's on the blower housing down at the bottom of the machine. No, so you're actually, gonna be like this. I can't, I can't see it, but I would say I think I don't. I think that's five m. But that that means you got to go all right. the way down to the motor. Oh, true. Yeah. I'm at the board. Oh. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. I'm looking way a little. Yeah, this is like a relay. Relay is clicking. It's telling you that it's getting power. Yeah, J9 no, two and J9 one. If the relay is clicking, it's telling you the coil has got power. It doesn't tell you the switch is carrying power. Oh, then you test the relay. Nope. J9 what I would do is I would put my other lead in J4. Yeah, J4. Because J9 this right is I neutral yeah, like and this like is power too. coming yeah. in. Yeah. If I have voltage there, yeah. it tells me a couple of things. What does it tell me? Relay what is that information? Tell you relay is not sticky. Not that it relay is not sticky. Tell me, look, I know what's good and what's bad just by that test. Yeah. What test should I make? Or, or what does that test tell me? Hey, this is what's going on. It tell you what's going on within that series of circuits going through the motor. You're still not telling me really anything. It's not giving power. It's not giving power. It's not giving 120. No, I have 120 oh, here. You got 120. Oh, mean your, your motor, your motor is getting power. Well, at least the, the board. board is setting board, power. Board is what setting did power. you say? The door switch. What about the door switch? It could not be. Well, it could be open. If I have 120 here, would my door switch be open? No. no. Why? Because it's all connected. Well, no, because because this here is an extension of my neutral. Okay? This here is coming from my line one. So if I got 120 there, what does that mean? It's my board, the relay's closing on the board, and my door switch is good. The door is not connecting to the board? Huh? It could be that J8. Well, I don't, I'm confusing myself. No, J4 doesn't need to be connected to the board for that motor to run. Listen, J84 is only there for one reason. Why is that? And I'll go back to this troubleshooting again. Why is that wire J84 even connected to the machine? Because it's really not carrying the neutral back. When the motor comes out, mm -hmm. it don't care about that. The motor goes this way, yeah. and it goes through the door That's switch and goes yeah. out. What, so then and that's probably a light to tell you the door is open. It's a what? It's something to send a signal to the board to say the door is open. Aha. Is there another reason why the board wants to know when the door is open? 
For safety. For safety, it doesn't want to yeah. let the machine run. Right. Mm -hmm. But really, why would why would that matter? Because the door switch opens is the, is the machine gonna run anyways? No. No, so the light bulb. Oh yeah. The light bulb in the drum. But How does it know when to turn the light on inside the drum? You open the door. The light. So that's neutral. On that okay, one. so this L1. board is looking at these two circuits here, mm -hmm. and when the board sees that that door switch is open, it closes another relay like this for that's the light bulb the and tells the light bulb to come out. Yes, sir. The light is low door switch, right? No, the light is hooked up to line one, isn't it? And that's neutral. So it's oh. So the relay on this one is line one to the motor, but the relay for the light is neutral for the light. There's another relay. I'm going to draw just a switch here. There's a switch here running to here with a coil that's carrying neutral for the light bulb. But when the board sees this open, this relay closes and turns that light on. Mm. Well, dang, it, it doesn't show all that. How do I know all that? Mm. Listen, when you guys are working on these machines and you're spending time with these diagrams, these machines, look at each component and try to figure out that component circuit. If you don't know it, come to me yeah. and say, how does this light bulb turn on? Because if you can't look at this and see these things that I'm pointing out, when you go to someone's house, you're yeah, I can see I got power to the board there. I can check power to the board, but I can't see the motor or the light bulb or why and how these things are working. And it's not given to you because this is meant for technicians. This is what technicians get paid to do. They can look at this diagram. I can look at this diagram and tell you all the circuitry that goes on with all the components in here, except for maybe like this low voltage here. I think this is the humidity sensor. And then, well, this is the moisture sensor. This one here, uh, I don't even know what the HMI Uno is. <laughs> it's um, I, don't, I don't know what that is. There's I'd have no to do some side. research on it. Again, last time I went over to Samsung, I ran into something. I said, what the heck is that? I'll figure, I'll figure that out. But again, I see the relay for the heater. Yeah. That's evident. Okay, um, we got this ground wire here. That's only for safety. That's for the moisture sensor. That's right. it. So some of these things, they're not given to you cut and dry. Mm -hmm. And you have to read these diagrams. This is important. If you guys take your machines apart and put them back together, yes, and you're mechanically learning how to get in the machine, how to service the machine mechanically, but you're not learning how to troubleshoot the machine. If you can look at this diagram and half of it, you just don't have no clue how it works. You guys need to come back to me on that. We'll either lecture on the whole machine or I'll explain to you this is the circuit for that, this is the circuit for this. Go back and, and try to make tests. Right. You um, explain it again. When you said if you get power J91 and J84 and the motor's still not running, why is the motor not running? Okay, J91 and J84, if I have power there. Yeah, that means the door switch is working. It means the door switch is working because it's carrying my neutral out. The board was only zero volts. It means the relay. Oops, I'm sorry. Your thermal fuse is working. It means the relay is working, but yeah, we got thermal fuse, belt switch, and motor. Those three things are not working. One of those three. Right. So what could we do? We could go here while we're still at the motor. Let's erase all this mess here for a second. I already checked out 120. Mm -hmm. So I know my board's doing its thing. Mm -hmm. I know if the door switch was bad, I wouldn't have 120. Right. If the relay on the board that turns, tells the motor to run, I wouldn't have 120. Right. I have to press start in order for, I, for me to have power there. So this relay will do that. Yeah. But if I don't have, I, I have power to don't run, I can then unplug the machine, mm -hmm. change my meter to ohms, and check 8, 4, and 9, 1 here, and check for continuity. And what would I be testing at that point? Do you have any broken wires? The thermal fuse, the door switch, and the belt, the belt switch. 
and the motor. Okay, broken wires. I know that this wire is not broken because I had 120 here, so that can't be broken, right? So now that just eliminated one of three things. If I go here, I can check for ohms. I'm really looking for the resistance value of my motor, which it's not written on this one, but roughly what's the resistance value of a dryer motor? Uh, 700 to 1500. No, 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 no. 5 to 15, I think. Well, actually, 2 to 7, 2 to 10. Oh, 2 ohms. to 7. Very yeah, low resistance. Yeah, 5 to 15. That was one of the answers. But they range, and he's right. They, they, they yeah, range. so uh, if I got a good fuse, a good belt switch, and I got 7 ohms, and my motor's still not running, my problem's at the motor. Right. That's it. Because if either one of these are bad, I have no reading at all. So now I gotta go to each component and ohm out each oh, wow. component individually. I have to go to the thermal fuse, put an ohm meter on it. I have to go to the belt switch, put an ohm meter on it. No, no, if I get 120, remember when you're checking voltage, if I got my voltmeter here and here, I'm not checking between these two points, I'm checking if power came down Oh, because it's going through the board that's yeah. already it's it's keep touching the screen it's messing me up here it's telling me that the line one is coming up oh, to this okay. point remember voltage doesn't check in between the parts that's ohms voltage is checking back to the power oh, source sir. to see if power is right. coming down and it'll be smart to test from tf1 to j8 right or i'm sorry no, no because now you're actually just going to put your own meter on yeah. here, your own meter on you here, and your own meter on there. By itself. You ain't the whole circuit from That's it. That's yeah. That TF1 once. to J A four. T F one to J. Yeah, but T F one to J eight four is only gonna gonna be like okay. Yeah, now if that, I get a read here, and I don't have a read here. That wire is broken. We we determined that the L one is getting power through the board. That's where you're getting one twenty. Okay, but it, all three of these parts are right there at the machine. Now go go on those three parts out. They're all right there. Yeah. The motor and the belt switch, the belt switch is right there on the motor right bracket. Mm -hmm. The cool. thermal fuse is right there on the blower housing next to the motor. Right. So take the drum out, unplug the machine, take the drum out, mm -hmm. and go test those three parts. Check the thermal fuse, yeah. check the belt switch, and if those two check good, what do you do? Change, change the motor. Change the motor. Yeah. That's it. It's only going to take... It should only take you 10 or 15 minutes on average to troubleshoot your electrical problem. If you're spending more than 10 or 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you're lost and, and, and you're losing time. Right. You need to pick up the phone and call somebody. You know, we got that Voxer app. The guys get on there and say, hey man, I got voltage at this point. Here's the diagram I'm looking at. What can I do? Right. And someone can say, own those three parts out. One of those three are bad. That's it. That's it. That's it. There's no more to, to be said about it. But you need to understand these circuits because this is not there. Just like I showed you that if that transformer wasn't on the diagram, mm -hmm. how do I know? You don't. You need to know that. Just like when a daughter, doctor walks up to you and he puts a stethoscope on, on your heart for like three seconds and says, send him to emergency room, stat. Mm -hmm. He knows after three beats, mm -hmm. you have an arrhythmic heart, you're not doing good. You need to go to the hospital right now. We need to send you now. Right. Well, how did, the how did the doctor know? He only listened to my heartbeat for like three seconds. Mm -hmm. Well, it's something they know through experience. Your guy's time in the class is experience. You're not going to be told these things when you go out there in the street. Right. So you need to learn it while you're here. So when you go out there in the street, you understand it. You guys got any questions on this? Hmm?